Hi guys, Eric Grotebois, 5 Minute with Eric. So what I wanna talk about is a little bit deeper into non-compete agreements. So let's talk about the context. Most of the time this will be in an employment contract, sometimes in an independent contractor agreement, or sometimes it'll be part of a partnership agreement or an operating agreement. And basically what we're doing is we'll have a clause that restricts the ability of somebody to later on compete against the business. Now, I just wanna say that this is in contrast to a non-solicitation agreement, which is where we say, hey, person, if you quit, you can't steal my clients, or a non-interference agreement, which says, hey, once we're no longer working together, you can't come and try and poach my employees or my contractors, or basically interfere with my other relationships. So we're in the context, it's always gotta be in writing, okay? So you can't have an implied non-compete agreement, at least I've never heard of one being enforceable. Also, this is gonna be very state-specific. And then within that, each state is gonna have the three limitations. So the first limitation is time. So generally rule of thumb is anything around five years or less is probably gonna be enforceable depending. Um, more, it might not be, right? A judge might be looking at this years later and say, you know, 10 years is too long to stop someone from being able to make a living. Um, little side note, in Europe, for example, you have to pay the employee the amount of time that you ask them not to compete. So you can make someone in France sign a one year not compete, but you gotta pay them since they're gonna be sitting at home with nothing to do. All right, so we've got the time, we've got the geography. So a lot of times we'll do as the crow flies, five mile radius. Sometimes it'll be by counties. Sometimes it'll be the whole state. I've even seen the whole world, you know, and, and at the end of the day, a judge is gonna be reviewing these for reasonableness. And the third thing is going to be the actual prohibited activity, which is really important. So once upon a time, I had a client that was doing staffing and he went on the internet and downloaded a, a contract and inserted a non-compete that he found on his own. And with all due respect to him, he wasn't a lawyer and he didn't know what he was doing. And he inserted this clause. And sure enough, later on, after the fact, when the person is straight up competing and stealing his clients, we read the clause and the clause said IT services. Remember, he was in HR staffing. So we wrote a demand letter and the guy went to a really good law firm and the lawyer called us up and was like, you know that you're going to lose, right? And we were like, yeah, we know. We just wanted to try in any way, see if we could scare your clients, see if we could bluff them. But whatever. Okay, so going back. So we're talking about either employment contracts, independent contractor agreements, or some sort of partnership agreement. And we're talking about a contractual clause that's going to try to limit somebody. So here's a perfect example. I hire a marketing director. And this person, I'm gonna pay them a lot of money, it's gonna be salary, they're gonna have responsibilities, they're gonna have their own department. But I say, but after you quit, or if I fire you, and maybe we can define that as uh, for cause versus without cause. Um, so for during our relationship, and then afterwards for a certain amount of time, I don't want you to be competing. Um, and so what would happen in the fact pattern is, the person leaves, usually on bad terms, and then later on, always something comes up. Like an old client accidentally contacts us and is like, yeah, I've been working with this person. Um, yeah, they set up a new company and they reached out to me and they told me that they were better than you and that they could do better services. And now we're like, okay, we got a problem, right? Because they're stealing actual clients, stealing business. In the, in the fact pattern earlier where the guy had the staffing company, I asked him business questions. I said, how much do you think your revenues are gonna decrease? And he's like, well, if I think he takes the clients he's gonna take, I think it's gonna be $500,000 a year in revenues. And then I said, okay, what's your profit margin? And he said 50%, which is by the way, is awesome. So that means he's gonna lose $250,000 a year profit, you know, in his maybe worst case scenario, maybe best case scenario. Okay, so let me get to kind of like the big event, what's been happening recently. So we've got a case, and basically we're in front of the court and the other side is trying to enforce the non-compete. And our defense is, well, actually we're not competing yet. And the judge says, well, you know, I really shouldn't be doing a declaratory judgment action or uh, decision, meaning that the judge shouldn't be interpreting whether or not the contract is enforceable until there's some actual damages, until something actually happens that then the judge can say, okay, no, that's bad. Um, and so essentially what I'm saying is sometimes it's premature. And this has actually been a thing that's been going around Florida where people will know that they have a non-compete. They'll quit their job and then they'll sue their former employer in a declaratory judgment action where they're asking the judge, hey judge, can you go ahead and tell me that this non-compete is not enforceable so I can go and compete? And what the judges have been saying more and more here in Florida is no, we're not gonna go ahead and tell you whether or not if you do some hypothetical thing, it would be bad. We're, that's not, the, the, this, the time for the case isn't ripe. Well, in our case, 
it, the case wasn't ripe and everything was going our way. And then our client decided to start doing things, allegedly. So all of a sudden the case is going sideways, we're scrambling. But guys, um, what's really important for you to remember is if you are an employer, you can make your employees sign non-competes. Again, it's gonna be state specific and I think it should be tailored to how sophisticated the position is. And if you are the working person, know that you might be sued someday if you violate the non-compete. So make sure that you're getting good advice and at least be eyes wide open. Thanks guys.